You are tuned to WOOL, 915 FM in Bellows Falls, Vermont. As promised, I have Ornette Coleman's stepdaughter on the phone, Dee. She's going to be in Brattleboro, Vermont in a couple weeks. It'll be uh, Friday, August 4th at the River Gallery School on 32 Main Street in Brattleboro, Vermont during their first Friday Art Walk on August 4th. Man, we do have Dee on the line right now. I'm going to pull some buttons and make sure everything's going to be good, and we'll be right back with you. My name is Jeff, and this is Black Sheep Radio in Bellows Falls, Vermont. All right, through the miracle of modern technology, I should have Dee on the line. D, you're going to be having a an exhibit of your photography work as a part of the First Friday Art Walk in Brattleboro, Vermont, on August 4th from 5 to 8 p.m. Um, it's a fascinating story as to how you broke into the photography of jazz musicians here in, uh, in the United States. Why don't we talk a little bit about the fact that the Vanguard was your earliest babysitter and that you had the opportunity to hang out with all these wonderful jazz musicians? Uh, I was pretty little, and my mother and Ornette were living together, and I was with them most of the time, and I didn't really get shuttled to babysitters. My mother just sort of brought me with her, and she parked me near the bartender with a 75-cent Coca-Cola in those (laughs) days, parked me with a Coca-Cola and asked David or uh, his brother to keep an eye on me, and I was perfectly happy and just sat there sipping my, my soda. I think my earliest memories were in the Village Vanguard. I can picture myself exactly where I was sitting. Uh, There were a lot of times that Thelonious Monk was playing there that I went there and I was parked right behind his piano, right the first seat directly behind him. I could have probably reached out and touched his back. So, yeah, it was real familiar to me, and the owners all knew me and knew that I was quiet and wasn't disruptive and... They trusted I wouldn't get lost or <laughs> wander yeah. around. Or I'm yeah. imagining a young a young girl in a smoke filled jazz room. Yep, <laughs> that's exactly what it was. But you sipping know. out of Coca Cola. Yep. So and and you touched you had mentioned the name Ornette Coleman and I didn't say at the top of the uh, interview that Ornette Coleman is your stepfather. Yes. I'm sure his cast of characters <laughs> that. Uh, that he hung out with on a regular basis was, um, as you mentioned, uh, Thelonious Monk. And um, the list of artists that you have had the opportunity to take photographs of, it just goes on and on. It's really fascinating to me. There's a super interesting element to all that list that you're alluding to. I take some pride because I was raised with musicians as family and friends of family and not as superstars. I've just come up with a different feeling with them, interacting with them ever since I was a child. And there's not a single person on that entire list that I didn't speak to personally before I picked up a camera. I asked permission to photograph of every single person on that list. That's how I roll. I've never used a digital camera or a motor drive. I never, ever, ever stand in front of an audience member or a musician. I don't photograph the first tune of any gig or concert or club date or recording session or rehearsal. And it's uh, it's got to be because of, of of my background. It's just I don't know if it's just me or because I see a lot of other photographers at work. And I, it's, it's a very, very sore spot to me. And I will actually sit down, even when asked by the musician to photograph, I will put my camera away if there's another photographer that's really obnoxious and click, 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 and looking at every single picture after every single click and standing up and completely indiscreet. So I just had to say that all those people on the list have given me permission to photograph them. And sometimes they say, wow, you're the first person that ever asked permission. You touched base on something that I'm curious about. You said that you didn't get in front of the audience out of respect, and that's an amazing thing. But please tell the, the, the tale of the photograph you took of Steve McCall. It's too bad it's radio, but if everybody comes to this event on August 4th at the River Gallery School starting at 5 p.m., they will see this photograph in the narrated 
retrospective, and they'll see people they'll recognize, they'll see people they won't recognize. I am a formally trained photographer, and I'm, I'm a, an artist, so I'm picking as as much as anything else for the image. <laughs> and the Steve McCall image is kind of special to those who see it, and to me, because of the emotion caught. But the funny story you're asking me to relay is that he played a 20-minute drum solo, and I was crouched down with a heavy camera and a heavy lens, black and white, silver film, non-digital, non-motor drive, no flash, crouched down this little woman so I wouldn't be in front of the audience, and I had no idea it was going to go on for 20 minutes. And after 19 minutes, he reached over, held his cymbal with his left hand, tapped it one time with his right hand, and then continued his chugga 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 like a normal drummer looks. And, th and that was the moment. That, that was the moment that, that I'd waited 19 minutes and could barely get up and walk away from, yes. That was the moment the mirror went down. <laughs> well, I never heard that one. <laughs> Um, the mirror in the camera. <laughs> yes, yes. Don't use in expressions that people <laughs> won't know, including the photographer. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so, oh, like, what else? Um, yeah, so a couple things. So at 5 o'clock, people are going to be coming into this event. Yeah. And they're going to be able to see your, your photos. And uh, one of the... Uh, uh, let, let me just add to that. Uh, sure. The photos will be on the walls with proper lighting. It's a, it's a River Gallery school. They will be up when people walk in and people can wander at will and see the photos. There's also a silent auction, so the silent auction items will be up. There has been an enormous amount of local Brattleboro business support for this auction. There are donations. Very generous business owners have wanted to participate in supporting the goals for this endeavor. And the goal for this endeavor is, <laughs> right? Let's tell people about this too because Okay, so this the is goal great. for for this entire campaign, it w it started off as a um, nobody really understand why these images had never been seen and and how I just couldn't pull off marketing and selling and making a living from my work in my 53-year career. I, it somehow <laughs> just never happened, yeah. despite every best effort, for better or worse. I'm not going to say how good or not good I was at it. Clearly, it wasn't working, whatever it was. So he, uh, there was a woman named Sarah Mutrix, who local people down there may know. She went and got a master's degree at Marlboro College, she started in Craftsbury, an arts organization, before she joined at the Arts Council. She's the entire sole head of the grants. Every single grant at the Vermont Arts Council goes through her, Sarah Mutrix. And she was helping me get my second grant, which I'm very bad at applying for and needed a little guidance and oversight. And she also, she knew nothing about jazz. She knew nothing about any of these musicians, but she saw the work. And she went without me knowing it to Alex, who was the head of the, the organization. And she said, Alex, this woman is doing this kind of work. It really needs to be seen. What, can I use my master's degree? And the name of the master's degree that she created is called The Science of Online Crowdsourcing for Nonprofit Organizations. Hmm. Now, I'm not an organization. But she's using me as a guinea pig to practice for the Arts Council, who she's an employee of. And I'm an artist, and I was highly motivated and a good guinea pig. And I've given it my best shot for the past 18 months. And I did an online campaign, which she gave me an outline for. She did not run it. She did not do it through the Arts Council. It was not done through the Arts Council. I'll be very, very clear in that. But she got permission to do it on her own time, to hopefully to benefit the artists coming after me. And that's the thing that kicked me into wanting to be willing to devote this kind of time and computer and learning curve to do it. The online crowdfunding part is, is now ended, but people can still see all the information and all the incentive gifts, the majority of those are still available. And they can do that 
from the Indiegogo site. They can find me as well on, on Facebook as Creative Music Photography and my own website, and you could get in information through those things. Did you ask me something I haven't gotten to yet? Yes, well, yeah, there's the, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> the but goal. I do, I do, you asked me the goal yes, of the cat. Okay. The goal, we didn't get to that yet. No, that's really important. Right. That's probably the, the first question, the and I wouldn't biscuit. have bored your audience to tears <laughs> by now. Um, the goal of, the, of this entire project, there were three events. Two are in the Burlington area. One was in June, one was, one's going to be in September, and the Brattleboro was in the middle on the 4th of August at 5 p.m., the goal of these events was to support the online crowdsourcing, not the, the other way around. So somehow, um, to the benefit of our local beloved Vermonters, they're going to get a first-hand taste, whereas the crowdfunding did not. So it's going to be really a celebration and a party as opposed to crowdfunding. There is no admission, and you just come and do whatever you want. You know, you could go to the other events at the Art Walk. You could come just to this one because you're not going to want to leave if you're getting there for the for the music or the slideshow that's got all these great stories that you're asking me about, all these musicians. There's everybody from Sarah Vaughn to Count Basie to, I mean, you've named a few. You could go on and on yourself. Yeah, you have yeah. the list in front of you, right. and I don't. But they're going to be really, the first event in Burlington, I will say that the audience would have stayed two, two solid hours out had I continued with those stories. And these are people that not, not all of them knew these artists or knew the music. They were fascinated with the stories I was telling, and it comes really naturally to me when you're, when you're looking at the images. Radio is a little challenging. The, the goal for the entire project, and this is really, I'm passionate about this, is I, just, I went and had a, an appointment that was facilitated by the head of the Jazz Journalists Association. He saw my work, and he contacted his connections the four top executives at the Smithsonian Institute for me to go and and show them my work and they their mouths dropped open they interacted with me and they told me and showed off the work that they had but they said the following uh, among other things they said one we've never seen as broad a roster as you have with the consistency of emotion that you capture in every single image. And we've never seen a roster that included Afro-Cuban music, so-called salsa, and Brazilian music in such depth. And everything in the jazz category, from Count Basie to Steve McCall to everything in between of all the different colors within the jazz label. And they said, we would love to have your work in our permanent collection. They said, we'd be proud to have your work in our permanent collection. We have Herman Leonard. We get these things donated. And I had to look at them in all my humility. I'm a mountain woman on the top of a mountain, a hermetic <laughs> life in Vermont. And yeah. I said, gentlemen, I don't have a pot to piss in. I can't afford to give you this work. And that was the first goal of the campaign, was to try to comply with their request to have my work in their permanent collection, because every other photographer on earth worth anything wants that for their resume. Right. So, I don't own a resume. Yes. This and is, the this other is... goal, which is the one I'm passionate about, is the same trip, which was a 20, 48-hour whirlwind trip to D.C., was I was invited to the University of the District of Columbia to meet with the head of the Jazz Archives there, wow. the Duke L Ellington Archives and the Jazz Archives and the music teachers of the Music Jazz Studies program there. And after the, a concert that they gave to the students, they took me in the back room and showed off what they do there. And, and these are the faculty of this Jazz Studies program. And they're interacting with me and telling them when they've seen this, this, this musician or that musician, and they're asking me questions. And everybody's eyes are big with huge grins on their faces 
hearing my, my, you know, very natural. I'm not nervous. I just tell the stories that go with every single picture I've taken. I'm just relaying, you know, the stories behind them. And again, nothing, none of this would translate for radio, so your audience better get there. <laughs> but the passion yes, that indeed. I discovered to share this with music studies students who are dedicating their entire careers to the study and emulation of what they consider their heroes that I have lived with and, and, and grew up around and photographed and interacted with and been friends with some of them, very close friends until their deaths, that I've driven them around when they had access to Cadillac limousines. They've called me to drive them in a beat-up Volkswagen Bug because they enjoyed the time we spent together. I mean, there are deep familial connections with these musicians and i've discovered i have a passion and i feel an obligation to share them with the young crop of musicians coming up you know and the more i get into this the more i keep dissecting this story <laughs> here and i come up with these little beautiful snippets that mm. your mom and your aunt started out as secretaries in 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 yeah. the, for the, some of these folks and they worked their way into positions of, of, of power in the jazz industry in the late 60s, and I find that so fascinating. Well, uh, let me, I wouldn't call it power as much as responsibility. Sure, sure. And they were just really good at what they were doing. Uh, and about my aunt, she, she was not a, a secretary to Quincy Jones. She was the only two A&R artists and repertoire at Mercury Records in those years. That's great. At the side of Quincy Jones, and I grew up playing with Quincy Jones's daughter when I would get parked <laughs> at Mercury Records oh, with my great. aunt. You know, uh, I mean, I knew Quincy when, uh, and he, I knew, you know, the, these are not superstars to me. These are people that knew me as a kid, many of them, and, and loved me and gave me love, and I felt that love, and, and uh, you know, it, it wasn't worship like people now feel for the musicians. Sure. And that's the reason I feel this obligation to share the humanity of these people. That's fantastic. I want to look, can we talk a little bit about the, uh, the exhibit that's going to be happening sure. and the details around it. So sure. I think it's going to be starting at five o'clock and the silent auction will start uh, as soon as the doors open, right? The, the exhibit will be on the walls and the silent auction will be set out with bid sheets and the items set out. There will be gift certificates, as I say, of the local um, donors in Brattleboro area. Um, and oh, great. also for, for the, there will all, not only gift certificates, there are tangible items as well. And there will even be Ornette Coleman's double microphone stand that I'll save for you if you bid highest. <laughs> Great. I'll bring a checkbook. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> so, and then there's going to be a slideshow. If you walk in the door, you'll, you'll wander around. You'll see the exhibit at your own pace. You'll hear some live music. The music is notable because both musicians are monsters. This is an acoustic Duet. There is no amplifier in this room because it's not needed. There's a flute player named Dominique Gagne who has deep Vermont and New Hampshire roots. She's in New York now. She taught it in Miami for a while. She's very well known in jazz and Latin and Brazilian circles and in Vermont circles. She lived in Burlington for many years where the bass player still lives. He's in a lot of groups that are very well known in Vermont. Um, I can't speak highly enough about either of their skill. Um, Dominique plays flute, John plays bass. On this gig he's playing acoustic bass and, you know, bass violin. Dominique is teaching at the Vermont Jazz Center the same week. In two days, she'll be staying right where you are this very second, Jeff, right where W-O-O-L is. She'll be staying in Bellows Falls for a night or two, um, and then teaching at the uh, Vermont Jazz Center for another few days after that. She was asked to come up to teach. That's how good she is. She taught at university level. She, you know, she's excellent. And the special music is prepared just specifically for this gig. It's a style of music called Choros or Chorinhos. I spent a year in Brazil. Dominique and John have both been to Brazil, and we're really excited to, teach, to, to, to share this music with people who may not have heard it. It is just incredibly, incredibly happy, gorgeous, upbeat, 
I mean, it is just amazing music. It's beyond description. So I really encourage everybody to yeah. come in and, and hear. There are so many levels of this event that anybody could come that doesn't know anything about music, photography, jazz. They could come just for, for, for the art on the walls. They could come to see what kind of swag is being offered. There's a, a beautiful shirt that I created with an original photo that's never been published or printed or seen anywhere before, except it's a high-resolution photograph on a gorgeous, beautiful T-shirt. And that, that will be available to people as well. So there's all kinds of things. It just, uh, in fact, come for the food alone. And, the, the, I shouldn't and to, entice, that. to entice even more, the event is free. The event is free. There will be, it, 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 we're trying to raise funds with donations for this and that, but nobody will be turned away. It's an absolute free event. It's at the River Gallery School, and it opens at 5. And by the way, I don't think anybody on Main Street for the gallery walk will be able to miss it because I have life-size banners to put in the window. I have one mm. of Sarah Vaughn. I have one of Eddie Palmieri, and okay. I have one of Ornette Coleman. And the one of Ornette Coleman is the one that's on the T-shirt. And again, that's my stepdaddy. So All right. he's, he's got a special sp spot in my heart. I picked one very special image, and it's so high resolution and so detailed. And yes, it's an original negative. This is not digital. This is original silver negative, and I had to wait and get it at a 30th or a 60th of a second, Jeff. You need to see this. Yeah. You could see the sweat on his face in the photograph on the T-shirt. Yeah, we talked about this before we came on the air, is, uh, how hard it is to take pictures of musicians, but particularly... Uh, African-American dar musicians skin, in pitch black, right. unlit nightclubs. Yes, yes. yes, and a 30th of a second. That's no joke. You have no. to really... It's hard to hold still for a yeah. 30th of a second. It doesn't yeah. sound like much. In black and white and in, in, in regular cameras, and they're heavy and they're big lens. Yeah, a big, big, even worse. Sort of relatively big lens. <laughs> Nobody's supposed to try anything under 125th of a second. Right. But I do want to talk about the slideshow that's going to happen around mm -hmm. 6 o'clock, mm -hmm. and it's going to about to be a, about a half an hour, which you'll be able to see a ton of these photographs in yeah. that, in that slideshow. Yeah. It's a photo re retrospective. You know, slideshow sounds kind of kind of trite, but it's actually, I've put it together myself. It's a high-resolution photo retrospective. It's going to be on very high-quality projector, a very high-quality screen. Uh, you know, we're lugging this gigantoso projector all the way from Burlington to Brattleboro because it's a, a, a really good quality one. No, oh, man, I, I, I am looking forward to this now. <laughs> I hope you um, are. As a photographer, albeit a, a, a hack, but I, I am really interested in, um, you know, I know what I'm looking for behind the screen, you know, behind my camera. I, I'm just curious what makes other photographers tick. Like, what is the image that you're looking to, to capture when, That's a good question, when you set Jeff. out? My, my, it's, a, it's a really clear answer to me because as that 20-minute drum solo story sure. um, made clear and when, when people can see the images we're discussing, there's only one thing that I wait for, and that's the split-second height of emotion, whether it's a trumpet solo or leaning over from staring straight ahead with no expression to leaning over with that incredible expression, that, uh, that emotion when he taps the cymbal one time with his head tilted over like that, or Count Basie cueing the band with the sweetest smile you've ever seen on anybody's face. You know, I mean, that's all I wait for. The Sarah Vaughn pick banner, life-size banner that will be in the window on Main Street at 32 Main Street there. You'll see this without even coming inside. You'll see that that's what my photography is about. That's all I do. I, I don't have any pictures that, that are anywhere, whether it's my Facebook page or the way. I, I just don't, I don't take pictures that don't say something. Yeah, and and you didn't have the luxury that we all have today, right? Of digital, because That's you can right. you can blast and yeah. Digital. Well, you can blast out a thousand photographs and not exactly. have to pay for any of them if you exactly. don't want to. CreativeMusicPhotography.com. Mm -hmm. This website is fascinating. So this is this is your <laughs> website, right? 
Yes. Okay. For better or worse. So, and there's a guest book there, and yes. if you ch- if you click on the guest book, you can see a lot of the folks that uh, spent time, and a lot of these are, are the artists themselves with quotes ab- about Sheila D- Jordan, these. who everybody in your area knows so well. She's got a quote in there. Sunny, I mean, all kinds of people have quotes in there. Yeah. The list goes on and on and mm. on. I, I'm. This is going to be a fascinating event for anybody who has time to get out or, or to make time to get out on yeah. August 4th uh, from 5 to 8 at the River Gallery School. I do want to talk about the uh, Indiegogo site that you talked about a little mm. while ago. Mm. This, the, There's no longer contributions being uh, accepted on this site, but there's a whole bunch of really good information, and there's a, yeah. a bit of a, sli- a snippet of the slideshow on here as well. There's a five-minute photo retrospective on that page with me narrating what the goals of the entire project are and there's also in in writing so you can read it you can see the photographs there's five minutes worth of a few dozen photos and and this part's important there's a solo acoustic bass accompaniment in the background that is the bassist that will be at the gig and that is there are some snippets in there that if you come to the if you come to the Exhibit and pull my sleeve and say, I recognized such and such tune in that um, background. I'll give you a surprise. I'll oh, give good. you a present. Oh, good. Because there are several tunes in there that should be recognizable, one of which was played on Jeff Starr's show today. Ooh. I'll post this website on my Facebook page at, at Three Bags Full and my personal one and the Black Sheep Radio one. Thank you. But it's um, Indiegogo and it's I N D I E, like indie music. Go go, no hyphens, no dots or anything. Just www.indiegogo.com. I think if you just go to Indiegogo and put in creative music photography, it'll come up. Right. I so think it, it will. It's a really long one. It's projects for no, slash preserving and stuff. No, you don't need to give that okay. at all. Okay, it's, all you need to do is go to the Indiegogo and put creative music photography. It should come up. Perfect. You could also go to my Facebook page because mm. it's slathered all over there. Even though. You know, you can't. It, it's not live anymore, but it's it's still up. And that's creative uh, music photography. Yes, on Facebook. On that's Facebook. That's a good place to go because you can get directed to a million things from there. But the web page, as Jeff said, has the roster, the musician roster. You can look at. It has a printable or just a viewing version. You could look at a, a zillion photographs on the on the web site as well. I just want to tell everybody one more time about your website at uh, www.creativemusicphotography.com. Dee, it was really a pleasure talking with you this afternoon. Thank you so much. It was really fun. So if you want to get your fill of jazz musicians' (laughs) portraits, uh, get into this silent auction and witness a slideshow and engage with like-minded people who are interested in the arts and interested in jazz and interested in photography, please come down to... The River Gallery School, and it's uh, right on Main Street, 32 Main Street in Brattleboro, Vermont, during the first Friday Art Walk, and that would be in a couple Fridays from today, which is August 4th from 5 to 8 p.m. Shake a hand with Dee. I can't wait to hear more of these stories. It's, and, right, it's right next to the Latches Theater. You can't miss that marquee. And right. They've been a big supporter as well. They're beautiful don- donations from the community. I'm so proud. Oh, good. Yeah. I, I, I'm really looking forward to this. I'm going to bring the family. Oh, great. Well, I'll bring that daughter that's going off to college because yes. she needs some education aside from what they'll teach her in school. She's a budding little musician as well. She <laughs> plays piano and guitar and bass She's and She's got to come, let me tell you. So, yeah. everybody, I'm so glad that that you have such a great station in oh, thank Bellas you, Falls area. I'm, I'm a huge supporter. I've been on radio in the past for nine years. I'm a second generation. My father was playing Dizzy Gillespie before I was born in Philadelphia on a radio station. <laughs> Dee, very nice to have this chance to talk to you. Thank you all. All right, very we'll see you in a couple weeks. I, just pull my coat and let me know you heard the interview, and just come and meet me. I'm quite affable. I don't bite, and I don't treat people any different than I treat musicians. If if you're if you're a good person and and not arrogant, I'll love you. All right. All righty then. Well talk said. To you later. All right, Dee, you Thank take you care. Thank you so have much, a, Jeff. You have a good weekend. Bye bye.